This Week in Careers, one innocent little word that can blow your whole job interview and how to make a profit off your aha moment. Welcome to This Week in Careers, where we're trying to save America one job at a time. I'm your host, Lisa Johnson Mandel, author of Career Comeback, Repackage Yourself to Get the Job You Want, and still news editor at AOL Jobs, but that could change any moment because today, sometime today, I'm supposed to be getting a phone call from my new boss. Now, with my luck, he's going to be calling during the show. A little concerned about that, so I have my trusty little cell phone right here, and I hope you don't mind. If he calls, I'm taking it, and I will share my negotiations or my humiliations, whatever they may be, with you, my dear viewers. So keep your fingers crossed for me, okay? And maybe we'll have a little action. Okay, we have a great guest today who has flown down from Palo Alto to tell us how we can make money and um, little have maybe perhaps create jobs for ourselves with our ideas and our suggestions. But before that, we're going to start right out with the weak career move of the week. Okay. I'm going to play Michael Moore today, and I am going to give the weak career move of the week dubious honor to the Montana Radio Shack owner who is giving away free guns with every Dish TV network subscription and equipment. Yes, <laughs> all you have to do is sign up, and he will give you a certificate and you take it down to the nearby gun shop and they will give you either a pistol or a shotgun, your choice, and they'll do the necessary background check on you. Now, in case you don't pass the background check, they will um, give you a pizza, a free pizza certificate. How's that? Okay. Moving right along, it's time for the tip of the week. Tip of the week tonight, today, is apparently employers do not like the word like. Yes, if you use the word like too much in an interview, it will blow your entire interview. And let me tell you, people use like gratuitously all the time. Like, I'm like, so he's like, and I'm like, and you're all, and he's like. And if you use it too much, it's really going to get you in trouble. They have two other pet peeves. See if you can pick them out of this sentence. So I'm like totally like professional, you know? Okay, the two other pet peeves, up talking, like putting a question mark at the end of every sentence, talking like that, and also using the term you know too much. If you want an example of way these, where these three mistakes are made all the time, take a look at, a, at, at an episode of The Bachelor sometime. Oh my gosh, those people use like, you know, and they up talk so much, I just want to throw my socks at the television. But I suppose that's what I get for watching The Bachelor and admitting it here on live web TV. Okay, so much for my humiliation. I'm going to take you right into the job of the week. You remember a few weeks ago we told you about Gilbert Gottfried losing his gig as the voice of the Aflac duck. Well, Aflac has opened up public auditions. So you too could be the voice of the Aflac duck. All you have to go is, to, is go to their website. Go to their website, quackaflac.com. But you have to quack quickly because the deadline is April 1st at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. So you can send them either a video or an audio tape of uh, you quacking like the flak duck. It has to be 30 seconds. And in case you can't do that by the deadline, you can call up by the deadline on that website, aflac quackaflac.com. You can find uh, different casting agencies across the country. There's like one in Chicago, one in uh, New York, one in LA, one in Austin. And you can, make an, you can make an appointment with the casting director and you can go in in person and quack for Aflac. And to give you an idea of some of your competition, we had some people send in some uh, videos for, to us at AOL. And I've got a little video of one of your top competitors right here. Hello. My name is Bono Duck. Welcome to the auditions for the new voice of Aflac. Okay, who's first? Hello, I'm Elma Fudd. Aflac. Thank you. Listen here, Buster. Next. Ooh, I thought I drew a pretty cat. I did. I did draw a pretty cat. Next. Oh, uh, Kermit the Frog here. Next. 
Oh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Seinfeld. Affleck. Next. Thank you. Hi, this is Casey Kasem. Next. Yo, Adrian, I need Affleck. You sure do. Next. Uh, I don't want to bother anybody, but is this the audition for Affleck? Am I bothering you? Next. I'm Andy Rooney. Did you ever notice? Thank you. Uh, uh, excuse me, but I'm here for the audition for uh, Affleck. Uh, well, blow me down. Next. Okay, we have time for one more. Go ahead, sir. Affleck. That's too fast. Slow it down. Affleck. No, it's, it's not Affleck. It's Affleck. Affleck. Oh, boy. Thank you. Don't call us. We'll call you. Affleck. I love that duck. <laughs> I thought of additioning myself, but how can you top that? Okay. Now from going with possibly making millions from one word to possibly making millions with one idea, I'd like to introduce my guest, founder and CEO, Matt Crow of AHA.com. Welcome, Matt. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for coming down all the way from uh, Bay Area, where all the good... Uh, dot com things are going on. All the center of the universe. Center of the high tech universe, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Now, your website is unique, interesting, and a little complicated to understand, but you have graciously provided a really cool video that pretty much explains it for us lay people. So we're going to show people this video and uh, so they'll get an idea of what you're doing. What's the difference between you and Thomas Edison? Execution. Ideas are cheap. Execution is rare. As a visionary, you're not alone. Someone, somewhere is probably having the exact same aha moment you just had. See? There's one now. At aha.com, you can be the first to stake your claim and own that idea. Aha is social ideation, a groundbreaking concept where many people can participate in idea generation and bring great ideas to life. AHA provides an easy-to-manage platform that allows you to collaborate with other innovators. You control who you work with on your ideas and who sees them. Those same innovators will vote on the best and the brightest. Working together, you can turn your idea into reality. And if your idea is truly great, into profit. Make your dreams come true with zero risk or exposure. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. You supply the inspiration, and the AHA community helps with the heavy lifting. AHA. Follow your dream. Okay. So tell me, Matt, how does AHA work? Explain to our viewers what exactly. I have this great idea. Um, one of the, I think what you use on your website is a tortilla chip that doesn't get soggy. <laughs> Is it? Is this, you want to use that? Yeah, or you want to use a different no, idea? No, look, Take I mean, it through the steps. Yeah, we're getting uh, hundreds and thousands of ideas into the system now, all across the board, literally from silent potato chips down to world peace and everything in between, right? And that's, that's the idea behind the brand of AHA. And uh, the definition of an idea, even by Merriam-Webster, is just a vision or a thought. So we believe that uh, our brand is ideas, and ideas are our brand, which allows people with any kind of idea, any kind of person, anywhere to submit ideas. And uh, our platform leverages what we call social ideation to essentially systematize and uh, automate the process of execution, which is, you know, is the hard part of doing anything. So what's, what is social idealization? <laughs> social ideation, yeah. Ideation, ideation. okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so look, I'm saying... <laughs> that would be it, different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if, if Twitter or if Facebook is social networking, right, mm -hmm. and Twitter is social media, then AHA is social ideation. And, and how that is is we're able to use uh, the social aspect of the internet as, as well as our algorithms and our platform that we have to essentially allow the crowd to help ideate, which starts with just an idea, right? From that idea becomes comments and, and um, posts and votes and threads around specific ideas that help enhance the idea and start bringing it to fruition, which ultimately turns into monetization or money for the uh, the users who are participating. So you can have this great idea and not have any concept of how to bring it to fruition, but you could throw that great idea out there on, on, on AHA and you would get lots of users that would help you, that would first of all tell you if it was a good idea yeah. if it, or if it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and then they would help you figure out a way to 
create it. Yeah, so, so think about like uh, how ideas are brought to life in the real world, right? So if you have an idea for a, a product or a company, right, you're going to tell a few of your friends and bouncing off a few people, they're going to give you feedback, you might create a prototype, mm -hmm. you might take it to the next step. Everything that happens in real life happens in AHA. And so what that allows you to do is take your idea from just an idea, or maybe even if it's fully baked and further down uh, the process, and bring it to fruition. And so essentially we use crowdsourcing, which lets the wisdom of the crowd vote up. We're able to, to sift off the cream off the top, which are the best ideas, and, and monetize those through our system through multiple different channels. So you're saying if I have a great idea, and I put it up there, and everybody gives it a thumbs up, all your users give it a thumbs up, you have the resources and the knowledge to actually create that product and bring it to market. Absolutely. Wow. In, in addition to our team, but more importantly, our, our technology, which is the powerful um, magic behind AHA, right? And is essentially we've uh, created a, a process, a systematizable process, that allows us to determine what is the best path to monetize a specific idea. Because sometimes some ideas may have IP. Some just may be best sold on a marketplace virtually somewhere. Some might need an actual company and, and people and a team, right? So what that translates to you as a user, as a person with the idea, the people participating around the ideas, translates literally into hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars, which is a really big deal, especially where today I believe where our economy is at and, and people being underemployed or unemployed or unhappy with their current situation is, is here you expend little to no effort at zero risk and there's only a potential upside from interacting with the website. Gotcha. Okay. So you're kind of like a virtual shark tank. <laughs> Is that a fair? Yeah, uh, I, I like to I like to call it the American Idol for ideas, really. The American Idol for ideas. Okay, yeah. well they call themselves the Shark Tank or the, the American Idol for businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah very, very much so, right? And and the, there are a lot of diamonds in the rough, and that's what we're seeing right now. Also, is we're seeing a lot of really um, ideas that I wouldn't have thought that people are liking are starting to bubble up, which is interesting because that tells us that there's a market for these these uh, ideas and these users that didn't have a voice before. Great, interesting. So okay. Let's say, can you, can you take me through the steps? Let's say I have an idea for a pet hair remover that, let's say a magnetic pet hair remover. It doesn't require tape, getting your, you know, making your clothes all pilly and all that. This is, you know, issues that I have as a cat and dog <laughs> owner and, and uh, a wearer of dark clothing. So <laughs> let's say I have a magnetic pet hair remover device. I t take me step by step through what I Got do. It. At Got AHA. It. So, so you have your aha moment, right? This yes. is your, I have animals and I think that things could be done better this way with my pet hair remover that uses a magnet instead of using sticky tape, right? It's a more efficient process for you. So you would enter, an, enter into our system, you hit claim, you stake your claim in it, you own that idea, it's yours. We create a unique identifier and a timestamp around you and that idea. But it doesn't have to have my picture on it and no, my no, no. true name and no, all that email, kind of email stuff. address, that kind of information, Excellent. just standard in, internet uh, submission information. Um, from that point then we allow the crowd to start voting and commenting and collaborating around your idea, right? So. Just like in real life, if people are starting to vote around your idea, that tells us that people are interested in it, right? That also tells us that, well, what is the next step? What, what is it going to look like? What colors are going to be? Where would it be sold? Where, um, where would it, could it be produced? All these normal things that have to happen in real life, we're able to do virtually on our platform that essentially for you greases the skids, right? Because A, you could may forget about it, or you may lose lose steam on it, or you might get stuck on a certain area when some guy from Boise, Idaho says, oh, absolutely, I would totally do this if it did this, right? And all of that feedback and content around the information is highly valuable for not only us as, as a hub, because that helps us shape and what that actual product company or service is, but more importantly, that helps us determine how to make money with it, which translates to you as the user. Um, and then you also allow people to weigh in on how to make it better. I mean, how to actually produce it, right? Correct. Any 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 feedback. We don't restrict. So again, Aha is as as a brand. We're not telling anybody what good ideas are or bad ideas are. We're just enabling it, right? So we're enabling the conversation to happen, and enabling the system to essentially take us through the process from step one to 200, and step 200 being monetization in the marketplace. So it being sold somewhere, whether it's on our platform or in a in an actual store somewhere or a, as a real company. So for you that uh, we believe helps, right? Because all of that enhancement is really valuable to you. Sometimes you don't see things, right? Or maybe you don't want to be an entrepreneur. Maybe you have an idea and you're, you don't want to work 15 hours a day and have 
phone calls late at night and no life and those kinds I of things. I know I right? don't. Right? <laughs> right? So maybe you just have a good idea and you want to wipe your hands free and clear and say, look, you know, give me an email back in three months telling me that I'm making $4,000 from this or something, and that's great, right? Yeah, I'd be cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea being that uh, we're really collecting ingenuity, and that's the powerful thing, I believe, in what, what we're doing is that we're able to tap into the, the collective wisdom of, of individuals and put that around ideas and start bringing it through the process. And from step one of just the idea all the way down to the end result being it, it being a finished um, concept. And I know you have an interesting model for splitting the revenue. And people who are essential in helping it come along, like I could just be, they get a piece of it too, right? So if I see somebody else's great idea and I think, oh my gosh, that is a great idea, and if they did this, this, and that to it, and here's how they do it, and these are the resources, and they can contact these people, then I can get a piece of the eventual profit, too, Correct. right? Correct. So that's that's the social ideation, right? Is The idea originator stakes this claim, they get a certain percentage. But then everybody else who participates in that also gets to get a piece of it as well, because you contributed to it, whether it be, be a vote or a comment, or if you did a design or a mock-up for it, if you're maybe an engineer and you know how to do sp specific CAD drawings, all of that is highly valuable. And essentially, us as a corporation are, ex are able to externalize all of the costs back to the crowd. So what that means is we can um, pay you our, our virtual, or, or we track it through a virtual um, point system and pay you real currency, real money in return in, to the tune of hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars as it starts to go out to market. Yay! So I don't even really have to have a good idea to make money at AHA, right? <laughs> two ways, yeah, two ways. You can okay. make money from submitting your ideas and or by interacting with the community. So I can just hang out and be part of the community, and when I see somebody's idea yeah. that I think is good and I have good input on, I can put yeah. it in there, and who knows, I might get a check down the line. Correct. Correct. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. But the one thing that throws a lot of people when they hear this is the percentage basis. And before you gave me a really good um, explanation of that, because I was shocked to find out that the original idea owner might get as little as 1%. Correct. So, Tell me about that. Yeah, so I say, uh, it, just like in real life, if I have a good idea, so do 4,000 other people at that exact same very moment, right? And the person, Nothing's created in yeah, a vacuum. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. The, the person who's <laughs> going to make, make money in it is the person who does something about it, the execution part. So we use this quote from Thomas Edison that says, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration, right? And uh, part of the reason why we haven't totally finalized our currency system, which if you look on our website, that's one of the next things that we'll be rolling out, is that we believe that the idea originator um, gets a smaller percentage than everybody else that participates. So in your example here, you said 1%, uh, which I think now we've changed to 10% of profits. Oh. So all oh. users, when you, when you initiate an idea, you will receive 10%. The additional users receive between 11 and 99%, dependent upon how much effort it takes to get the idea out into the market, and then AHA takes the remaining. So essentially, some ideas might be 99% and AHA might make nothing. In, in other instances, maybe it's it's 30% overall and AHA makes 70%. So as much effort as it takes to get it to the point where it hits our thresholds and our algorithms that tell us, yep, okay, now we can make money with it and push it out into the marketplace, is how we distribute the points in currency system. So are you incredibly connected that you can bring all these, these products and ideas to market? Uh, I think any entrepreneur has to be incredibly connected to, to build a company and to be able to uh, take something and turn it in, take something, take nothing and turn it into something, right? Uh, but absolutely. I mean, as, as we, I guess my Rolodex is quite uh, valuable, I guess, as well as the team that I have on, uh, working with us. And um, going forward, I believe that that'll just continue to increase. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. you're young, you've received funding for this company, you took basically nothing and turned it into something. Tell us about your journey. Yeah, it was my aha, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, look, I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years and uh, a ton of success and failure and everything in between, literally. And it's been an interesting ride. And I think part of a lot of uh, people don't realize is that and the entrepreneur's journey is very different than, than the corporate route, which is a little less risk. Entrepreneurs are usually a little more up and down and more volatile. And so uh, I started a company in high school that I sold at a young age and got a really good experience. As what kind of a company was it? It was a landscaping company. Oh, cool. I was the guy uh, that started out as a very small 
at age 16 mowing lawns that turned it into by age 19 the largest company in that metro area and then sold it for a substantial amount of money. Wow, you know that's really interesting that you would say that because I interview all the undercover bosses after they've been on their you know in the <laughs> CBS show and I, I the one question I ask all of them is what was your first job? And I can't, I'd say probably about 70% of them started out mowing lawns. They're mowing <laughs> lawns or delivering papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're in good so company. I think my first one was caddying, though, technically. Caddying. Caddying ah. at a very young age, yeah. Although, thinking back, though, and I tell this, we talk with this about investors and, and actually AHA as well, is that I couldn't go out. A lot of internet companies today are based off of uh, potential revenue later on, right? Like maybe we'll receive advertising dollars later on down the road. But I always tell people Starbucks can't make money by giving away lattes for free. It just wouldn't work, right? And I think that experience in my background of building real companies that had to produce revenue translated that knowledge and expertise into building an internet company has uh, gave us something unique. So, okay, you started out with your landscaping company, and did you go to college? No. You did wow! So you truly are a self-made. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's, that's not entirely true. I did in high school. I had uh, post-secondary, so they paid for me to go to university. I finished high school a couple years early, so they gave me uh, some classes. But so but you were one of those intellectual prodigy kids, huh? Maybe I don't well, know. Well, you know, Bill Gates didn't graduate <laughs> either, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. Look, I mean, I think uh, I don't have any problem with college education. I think it's good for some people, just not for all. And for me, my learning style is learning from failure, not from not from putting my head in a book. So I learned by doing. That's interesting, learning from failure. Well, there's some advice for people. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of don't like failure. Yeah, nobody <laughs> how does. Do you learn, how do you don't, learn from failure? Don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you touch your finger on the hot oven, you don't touch it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that's how you learn from failure. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So from landscaping, what was next? Uh, I went from there into commercial real estate and started doing large-scale development and worked my family also on a company that was in commercial construction management that's been in my family for 152 years this year. Oh my goodness. And you've been, you guys have been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I put my hands into that and, and I learned a lot again, but it was, really wasn't where my heart was. You know, I always knew that um, I would go build another company and, and enjoyed my first business, which was uh, I lived and breathed every day, all day, just like I live and breathe. Uh -huh. And I guess learned a lot about, um, as I started building more companies and investing into companies, I learned about private equity and venture and investing and how to build a company and how to build a team and how to build a brand and all those things, how to employ people and manage HR and all the things that I don't like to do, which is the run the business part. I like the creative part a lot better. Uh, learn to become better at that over the years. And but you can hire people to do that too, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Any smart um, entrepreneur or business owner always does that, right? It surrounds himself with people that are, that are um, make up for his own weaknesses. Now, you're in the in the Palo Alto area, Silicon Valley, right in the heart of everything. You're competing for employees with Google and micro well, not Microsoft there, but just so many companies up there that are um, really throwing out all the perks and everything. And you told me when I first met you that you were having trouble recruiting people because all these other companies were grabbing things. Tell me a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, especially right now uh, in the technology world, right? Because uh, as developers are really are a very highly sought after commodity today, even more so than I think a lot of other trades, right? So if I were to go to university today, if I were to go to school, I would absolutely go to school for development and design, right? Because that's the future, that's where everything is at. And the, the best talent in that area have offers from three or four or five different places, right? So it takes a certain personality type to want to work with an early stage company versus a Google of the world, right? So. Um, those guys have a ton of money to throw at uh, recruiting and um, free lunches and pickups from their home, or whatever it is, free bikes, I don't know, nap time, you, you name it, right? Yelp has a beer tap. We yeah. talked about this last week. They've got a beer tap, a free beer tap in their, in their employee kitchen that people can just go over and pour themselves a brewski anytime they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess what I could offer people is I, I, I'm a big fan of siestas. I like naps, right? I, I'm okay. a really firm believer of that. And as we start to build a high, I want to work a uh, siesta into the corporate culture. Right? Nice. And, and I think people would like that to be able to take naps at work. But I think uh, uh, I shouldn't say that it's, it's really hard to recruit good talent. But at, like in any any industry, top talent always is is um, comes at a cost, right? And so for us, as an earlier stage company, it takes more a little more time and effort and and we're competing against guys with really deep pockets. Yes, <laughs> huge guys. And uh, how many employees do you have now? 
So we have eight right now and about 25 total consultants. And as things start to progress, I'm thinking over the next 60 days, we'll probably have to double our uh, current. In the next 60 days? Yeah. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of HR headache to take yeah. care of. <laughs> that's my, my CFO's job. Wow. <laughs> but. I uh, one of the things that I was amazed by when I went on and looked at the site, it looks like it's been around for a long time, but you guys just launched, right? Yeah, so just on Monday, uh, we came out of stealth publicly. So we've had a, a, a limited amount of people that we've had interacting within the site and testing and things like that, but we knew we were on something really big, so we kind of kept it under wraps until we were ready to release. And, and just as of Monday, uh, we opened it up, which is fun to see the, the response, which has been overwhelmingly positive. And, and even though today the site itself is very simplistic, the infrastructure is in place, which is our, our crazy cool magic and algorithms behind the scenes that, that does hundreds of thousands of steps while the user is, is only having to, um, to do minimal amount of effort on the site, which then allows us to start growing as more ideas come in and more users start submitting their ahas. It is very user-friendly. I like that about it. Um, and now you're doing a huge media tour right now. I've seen you in New York Times. They did a nice interview with you and a feature on AHA and uh, Forbes just did one and you're going to be on what CNN and tell me about some of the yeah, other. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of local LA. Uh, we were on Cron in San Francisco. Dallas is upcoming. Um, New York is another one of my targets as well for some larger media outlets. So the next two to three weeks or so, my, my time is spent doing the fun stuff, which yeah. is the stuff I like to do, right? <laughs> this is your favorite <laughs> stuff? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, this and, yeah, yeah. I, I like all that. I like the creative work. You have right? to like, say yes, because yeah. you're sitting here with me. You got to schmooze me just a little. No, it's good. It's good. No, look, I mean, uh, like anything, um, the devil's in the details, right? So, and that's my job is to, as we're managing the whole team is to see all the little things and steer the company and have the meetings and the late nights out and the, you know, media tours and all that stuff. So, uh, but I like it. It's good. Cool. Now, you've, are you tempted sometimes just to, to go with a, a fake identity on the site and comment on some people's <laughs> ideas and, and get involved because you're excited about it? Well, I never thought about that until now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I planted an idea. <laughs> no, 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 look, I Can mean. Can I monetize that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, look, I mean, th this is the wisdom of the crowds. Like, really, in, in theory, no one, like, comment or one vote or one interaction has much harm to the overall concept, right? Because uh, the wisdom of the crowd is all about taking different slices and dices of demographics and psychographics, right? So you're Lisa, you lived your life this way. I'm Matt, I lived my life this way. The guy next door, right? We all have different um, takes on things right because of our experiences made us who we are so no to answer your question but it's a good idea now that I think about it have you seen some ideas that really really t press your buttons that really make you excited to be working uh, on? yeah what did I see this really, really fun one this morning I don't know there's this some of the ones that are trending which I never thought would be the ones that they are like there's this one um, called just pockets and it's kind of like a snuggy type you know real funky um, product that some college kid has that uh, I, I initially saw this, I was like, wow, that's hilarious, but you know, but people seem to like it for some reason, right? So who am I to say about it? Um, but there's been all sorts of stuff, like a, a little GPS tracker like they have in dogs, right, but for kids, so it would prevent um, abductions and, and, right? And, and it's not a chip that you implant in your kid. Is this it? Is, this is somebody's aha. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are going to go nuts over that one. <laughs> uh, GPS, GPS, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, RFID device socks, right? So you could like match your socks together. Now all that the time. I would go for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, all sorts of things. Disposable plates, everything uh, I've seen really bizarre. I mean, in, in actuality, we're seeing about 80% of the ideas are probably like, eh, you know, whatever. But the top 20% are really interesting, which is cool. And of those 20%, the top 10% are probably really really ingenious and 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 we're collecting information that we would probably never see anywhere else right because that's the person who doesn't have a voice or who's had this idea has been thinking about it for three years but never has told anybody because he doesn't know what to do or how to do it or he's afraid somebody's going to steal it or whatever so that's where we're really able to leverage uh aha uh -huh. that's really cool now one last question how do you get people to come to the site? What are you doing to drive traffic? How are you attracting users? Yeah, so uh, obviously a lot of it as an early stage company, just people hearing about AHA, uh -huh, right? And, and like building any brand, I guess it's all about uh, people seeing us out there and, and around. So we've got a couple of viral pieces built into the site, but more importantly, I think um, I want to I make AHA, uh -huh, like you never say, I'm going to search it on the internet, you say I'm going to Google it. 
right? I want people to say, ah, I've got an aha. I don't want them to say, I've got an idea, right? And work that into the everyday vernacular. So my job as, as the founder, I guess, is really to build a brand. And we've got some really, really cool things I can't talk about on a guerrilla campaign that we'll start doing, I think, in a couple weeks that are pretty exciting that you'll see around and in the news and that kind of thing. A guerrilla campaign. How <laughs> exciting. Yeah, we'll have to have to keep up with that. You know, and today, there are so many people out there who are either in jobs they don't love or trying to get a job and not making a lot of headway. So a company like this, what fun. Go on this website, start tweaking around. Who knows? You might just create your own job. You might be able to, you know, I mean, become the CEO of your own company with, with this kind of thing. So a little help from your friends. Yeah, definitely. I think long term we're starting to see, and I have a couple of neat partnerships that are coming out now also, is that really we're able to leverage the ingenuity of individuals, right? So maybe you have a job that you don't like, right, but you still need to pay the bills or you need to do whatever. It doesn't take that much time. Instead of spending your time messing around on Facebook, liking comments and voting, why not mess around on a website that could potentially add real value to you, right? Like you said, maybe employers were able to track what users are interacting the most and adding the most value and see that, wow, that person really does have a specific industry expertise. Or maybe they're making money by contributing to specific companies or products within the community as well. So I think as we start to grow and see what's happening with the system, we'll see a lot of really interesting things come out of it. That's, that's so interesting. Okay, and what about, you, you did have funding. So, I mean, for this company, you didn't just fund it out of your own pocket. Was that just... How was the process of doing that? Was that just like incredibly intimidating or exhilarating or <laughs> knock, knock, knock? Yeah. Hi, can I have a million dollars? Yeah, look, I mean, I think like anything, um, we always put the hard things off to last, right? And, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs like to build companies, but they don't like to raise money because it's a pain in the butt. It really is. And, and actually, yeah. the, it really, it's more of a distraction. It's not that it's, it's really that hard. It's just a distraction away from building your business, right? So I think uh, uh, it's part of, part of it. It's what you sign up for. So, um, you know, I guess if that's what it takes to get the end result, then I'm signed up. It's like taking out the trash. It's a dirty job, but have to do it. somebody's, somebody's got to do it. Do yeah. it. Right. <laughs> it must be done. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for yeah. coming, man. Yeah, it's been a pleasure Thank you having, for having you. Me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this has been so interesting. Um, there are so many different ingenious ways out there to make money, to enhance your career, to just enhance your life, basically. And um, this is... A unique one. Your idea is, is unique and interesting, and it's and it's fun talking to you about it. And I went, oh my gosh, it's ringing. <laughs> I put it on silent. It's ringing. It's him. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Oh my gosh. This is Lisa. Hi. Yes. Yes. No. Oh, no. No. No! I have to go. <laughs>